for me, sports therapy has enabled me to pursue what I want to in college, which is going to, I'm a, I would like to be a physician's assistant. Um, so basically utilizing all of my time in high school to get as much information as I can now, which I highly encourage for any incoming freshman. Um, you know, projects range from shadowing to taping exams to, you know, just about anything you can think of in Dr. Reed's and the other health profession classes. Well, I started taking it actually in freshman year. I took health systems and it was a fun class. It was um, not really what I expected. It was really broad, but it really helped me figure out that I wanted to be in this field of study. And so I went on to take sports med, which I enjoyed a lot. I love Dr. Reed. I love the way she teaches. She's so personable and uh, all the stuff we do, like the labs I was talking about, um, taping and all the assignments are fun because it's things that I really enjoy. Um, anatomy and physiology is also really fun. All the labs you do, uh, like dissecting things and learning about the body systems. Um, personal training, since I've taken all the other courses, now I get to take this course and by the end of the year, I'll hopefully be certified as a personal trainer by taking the national exam. So it's a good way to end high school. Everything kind of builds off the first few classes you have, so health systems um, was like basics, like vitals and stuff like that. Um, and now you get into like the sports injuries and then you learn if you want that or like you want to go to the nursing side. Um, and so like into personal training, you just like dig deeper into everything you learned in sports med. I started my freshman year by taking health systems and professions and I really loved it. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do medical stuff. It was kind of a trial and error thing and I ended up loving it. So my sophomore year I then TA'd that class um, and I also took language of medicine my sophomore year. Moving on to junior year, I took anatomy and physiology. I did clinical observations, which is really, really valuable. Um, and then now senior year I am in nurse aid um, and there have been supplemental courses throughout uh, like biology and statistics and stuff that have also been helpful um, but that's kind of the path that I took. You learn how to take vital signs, you learn how culture impacts care and it's a really good overview of how in general care works so even if you're not interested it's good because we all use health care and it takes you through every aspect of it, from geriatrics to pediatrics, surgery, from like rural care to urban care in a bunch of different ways. Through all the classes, there's a lot of um, continuity and it creates this feeling of kind of like a family in the program. All the teachers are really close and they coordinate your learning so you're never just learning things that you already learned over again. It really is building from each year to the next, but that's not to say you can't take one or the other. They all offer a unique perspective and unique information that you wouldn't learn somewhere else that you can kind of cater towards what you're focused on. I think health professions is a great place to start. It has the overview of everything. Language of medicine is great for any healthcare career or for consumers of healthcare in general because you learn all the terminology. That class will go on to help you if you want to take anatomy and physiology or any future health classes. Um, clinical observations is really fun and it's the first class where you're really in the healthcare field. You're out there and observing and then of course nurse aid training you're really um, providing the care and learning how to provide the care and learning how to be empathetic as a healthcare provider and um, really hands-on and interact with actual people which you'll be doing if that's the career that you choose. In early childhood there are three levels. There's understanding young children, early childhood one, and early childhood two and they each teach you about different things of childhood development and then how you're able to create those lesson plans so that you're able to learn how to teach kids. Also how like you teach, not just how the kids will learn. My favorite part about the early childhood program is learning about all different types of kids and teaching them with their different personalities. This class taught me that when I go to college, I want to go as a child life psychologist and help them learn and study about their development. You learn how to make lesson plans and do different types of art, art activities and music activities and read books. So the early childhood program is three levels. It's understanding young children in ECE 1 and ECE 2. And it teaches you how to make lesson plans for the kids, why they do the things that they do. You study child development and you also get to do hands-on activities with kids to experience it yourself. Well, I've always wanted to be a teacher. So you're able to have more experience than maybe other people who didn't take a childhood program. And you're able to learn to create those lesson plans so you have 
that Head Start opportunity over the other people. If you're an incoming freshman, you might not be sure what you want to do when you get older. So if you like kids at all, then you could go into the early childhood program and you may not want to be a teacher, but you could get to work with the kids and see what you want to do. I love that you get to work with the kids and you get to read books to them and create activities based off of what you like and also what they need to learn about. You learn how to create lesson plans and how to better alter your schedule so that it fits the students' needs instead of specific things based on a whole group. Culinary industry is my passion, so this is something I've always wanted to do for my entire life, for as long as I can remember. And the class here at State High is a really good opportunity to expand your horizons and see if it's really an industry that you want to go into. I didn't think I wanted to be a chef or a restaurant manager when I grew up, but taking this program made me realize that it would be something really interesting to do. So I'm going to um, a culinary arts school for college. This class provides a really strong foundation for you to either become a line cook and work your way up through the industry or to go on to culinary school. Um, it, throughout the class we cover pretty much the first half a semester of culinary school. So if you do decide to go to culinary school, you're going to have a step ahead and it's going to make that transition a lot easier. So the culinary arts program is a three-year program and you start in culinary one with the basics, which is safety and sanitation, knife skills, soups and stocks and sauces. Um, you do breakfast unit, which the kids technically tend to enjoy, um, just because it's one of the few units where you do get to eat everything. Culinary arts is not an eating class, which is a big misconception. It's a cooking class. You don't eat a lot of the food you make. Um, and then in culinary two, you move on to breads, pastas, and desserts and you also get your serve safe certification during this year which is an industry certification based on safety and sanitation um, and it lasts five years so you won't have to do that in the beginning of culinary school when you go um, and then in culinary three you do the international project and it's a lot of learning how to make a composed dish and learning what ingredients go well with each other in ARC 1 you basically start learning the basics of what architecture is and like different lettering skills um, and then ARC 2 you put those into practice and same with ARC 3 and ARC 4 but the courses and the projects get a little bit more difficult as you go along. What I really enjoy is the tools and aspects that it provides, the resources available to me that allows me to complete the projects. My dream is to major in architecture so taking an architectural drafting design class for four years really allows me to get the experience that other students don't at other high schools. Even if you're not going into architecture or architectural engineering or anything similar, it just opens up your creative window and it gives you the tools and resources to be able to pursue anything that you would like. Um, you learn a lot of different life skills through this and a bunch of like technical skills as well, which can be helpful in most fields. So uh, that's why I would... This course will take you through knowing nothing to being able to design a whole house. Uh, that's in your ARC 3 year. So your fourth level can be even more. So if you can imagine being able to go from where you are now to where a professional is, that's what this course will help you do. Um, both my freshman and sophomore year, we did a candy house model where we took a downtown building and we recreated it with like graham crackers and like different edible materials and it was a really cool way to be creative um, with a more simpler project. My favorite project was we helped Habitat for Humanity in my ARC 3 year, so when I was a junior, and we helped them design a structure, all the plumbing, all the mechanical systems for that building. I've applied to Penn State, Virginia Tech, I'm going to apply to Pratt, Miami, and possibly University of Arizona, all for the architecture programs. And this class is just opening the windows to those, giving me the skills that are needed to apply and be competitive in the application process. Uh, some of the things we learn, depending on which course you take, if you take the digital and analog or electronic systems engineering, you'll learn about circuitry, such as how you measure what's going through it, your voltage, amperage, resistance, and just general power or wattage. But so you use all of that. Um, you'll learn how to make stuff in robotics. You actually make robots. Currently, I am admitted to Penn State for one of their engineering programs and I feel that this 
courses here have given me a leg up because I already know how to produce my own things. I can CAD, I can build it. Pretty much I've, I've a great skill set going in. Like just through other stuff, I know my calculus. Um, I know how to actually build it. I also know some of the general like things not to do. And sometimes if you can put it on paper, doesn't mean you can actually make it. And I feel that's greatly prepared me. It's not really a class I'm encouraging. I'm encouraging a whole program, and it's just, it's a really fun experience. It's a great time, and you're going to learn useful information. Because even if you don't want engineering, you're going to learn some basics, like how to actually use tools and stuff like that. You're also going to learn a good bit about the design process, so you're really going to be able to build your own stuff. My freshman year, I skipped exploring engineering and went straight into electronic systems engineering, which has a sister course, quote unquote, which is digital and analog, and they both deal with circuitry in a different set. So it, electrical systems, you'll focus really on the circuitry and everything like that. You'll learn your res what resistors do, how they work. You have to memorize the resistor color code. I learned just like uh, and and or circuits and binary. Uh, robotics, you'll learn just the general of robotics, how stuff works. And m when we had to make our own robots, we had to just ballpark what a 90 degree turn was. There was no like set number, so you're also going to learn a lot of how to work for yourself. You're going to be given a task and not necessarily ho how to do it. You're going to be told, this is what you need to make, but you're not going to know how to make it, so you have to figure it out on your own, and I had a great time. So right now we're just going over the basics, like, what struct is, like what integers are, and like all the basics, and then later on we'll branch off to do more difficult labs, and it's just a whole learning experience. For C++ is really a basis for like all the programs, and so once you learn C++, then you can branch off to other uh, programs and they'd make a lot more sense. It's a lot of fun, you learn a lot, because he teaches you a, a bunch of different types of skills, especially in his Python course, the comp sci class. He teaches you how to write like an AP student to teach you how to program as well. And it's just a whole lot of information, but he tailors to you. I like the program because it's very real information. Everything we learn can be applied to real life later on in a real career. You learn a lot about building networks, how to manage them. Uh, we practice it online on a simulator and then we do it real life with the actual equipment. I think it's a great way to get involved in the uh, networking community and it gives you a big head start into university for your career that you might plan to do. So the classes you can take, most freshmen start out with A plus essentials, then you can go to Cisco One, Security Ethical Hacking, Cisco Two, and IT Entrepreneurship. And IT Entrepreneurship is useful because it's a real business. And the Cisco classes get you prepared for uh, working with hardware and how to set it up. Right now, uh, in my Cisco 2 class, we're learning how to set up networks with routers and switches. And in security and ethical hacking, we're learning how to manage Windows systems and Linux systems. So it's real work that you'd be doing if you went to IT. You'd have to manage users, uh, troubleshoot networks. So it it's very applicable. <laughs>
in video media tech you learn all aspects of video production so we start out with your pre-production side of things lots of planning the storyboarding the script writing planning your shots before you get a camera out um, to film your video after that you will get into the shooting side of things so you can check out cameras which we have a whole bunch of canon cameras we have a 360 camera a couple gopros and then we are acquiring a drone so you can get some amazing cinematic aerial shots um, so you'll learn how to set up the cameras how to set up tripods, lighting systems, um, and then some other fun things like green screens, reflectors. After that, you'll get into editing the videos. Um, we are fortunate enough that we use the industry standard pr production like programs, um, so Premiere Pro and Adobe After, After Effects. Those are the industry standards across the world for anyone making videos. Um, so anyone from YouTube creators all the way up to Hollywood films, um, they use these programs. So you'll have a great, great understanding and basic um, skills in these programs that you can carry on and advance throughout the years if you decide to go along the video production path. Um, so we work in a whole bunch of fun projects that encompass all those skills all together. We do still, um, like personal vlog videos about ourselves. You'll do like a promotional video about a product or a service. Um, so you can do all kinds of crazy stuff in the class. There's really no limits um, as long as it's school appropriate and um, your creative mind thinks of it, you're good to go on the video for most cases. It's a really great class, even if you don't know if you want to get exactly into the video production field out of high school. Um, if you want to get into marketing or announcing, any kind of sport announcing or newscasting, anything like that. Even if you want to be an actor, singer, dancer, this class gives you a great understanding of how video production works. And that will allow you to work better with film crews, um, directors, anything like that down the future. So I recommend taking the class to anyone who's slightly interested in video production, photography, marketing, or really if you just have space in your schedule and you want a fun class to take, this is a great class. Um, all the skills you learn in the class you can build off of down the road. It's just a super helpful, all well, all around well-rounded class and um, I recommend it to everyone. You start in Auto One and it's really basic. You just learn about tire changes, general management, you know, learning the basics, the ins and outs of a car. And as you get towards Auto Three and Four, you get to learn more advanced things such as putting an engine together and things like that. So, I mean, as long as you're in the program, you're gonna learn as much as you wanna learn about the cars. It's a life skill. So, you know, you take this and regardless of how much you take, you're gonna be able to have skills that you can apply right away. Uh, for a lot of students, they're gonna end up driving before they graduate. So they're, it's good to know about the cars. And if automotive is the the career you're thinking about or interested in, this is a great way to bo both learn about it and get certifications in areas that you can take into college or beyond industry careers as well. As you go through the program, you're working on real cars, both customer and donated. So what you're doing is always going to be live. It's always going to be hands-on. Um, and we also take a number of field trips. So, you know, everything you do is going to be some sort of mini project. It's going to get you information and real life experience. So it's a lot of fun. So starting at Auto One, it's going to be really simple, just the basics about the car, and as you work your way up, you're going to get more in depth, you're going to have knowledge to build off of. It's about 50-50 classroom and, you know, hands-on work, um, but really most of what you're going to be doing is going to come out to that hands-on work. But if you are more classroom oriented, through today's class you'll be taking lots of different courses, you'll get run-throughs of how to do what you're doing, different tutorials, um, you know, testing. And you know, you don't have any homework as well because you, as the teacher likes to say, you can't take cars home with you. So everything you do is gonna be contained in class. You're gonna have help from the teacher and your friends the whole time. And it's really nice just to be able to get both the academic side and the hands-on side. It's a fail-proof class. Um, you know, you can get really a B minimum as long as you stick with the program and you're doing what you need to do. And if you enjoy it, you know, you continue through with that. You can just get a lot of good certifications out of that come Auto 3 and Auto 4. A lot of people have gotten uh, opportunities at local dealerships, um, you know, Mercedes, things like that. You get a lot of opportunities educationally as well. So it's a, it's a really holistic class and I definitely encourage it. And at classes you can take anything from plant science to animal science to mechanics. Um, some of the classes that I've taken have been small animal science, large animal science, wildlife, horticulture, and exploring egg science. And just like throughout all of these different programs and classes you can learn a lot about stuff that you're interested in. Yeah, no matter what you want to go into for your future, it's really nice. Like ag courses help with everything. Um, they're super fun, you get to meet a bunch of new people, make a ton of new friends. 
it's just really inclusive. There are lots of different scholarships that you can get through FFA or through um, just different like ag programs um, and so that's really helpful and also I think it's just generally good for you to know like how your food is produced and um, know the history of that. It really helps if you want to go into the veterinary program. Um, there's a bunch of, there's large animal science, small animal science, um, Ag Science 1 is really helpful for that too. I'll be going to school for pre-veterinary sciences and it has really helped me like set up my path for um, those things in my future and with all of the animal science classes it's been really nice. I think it's just a great opportunity for them to meet new people and also build leadership skills, but also I think it is important for everybody to know a basis of um, where their food comes from and how it's produced just so that you can live a healthy lifestyle. Right now we talk a lot about sustainability and also how to practice, like I am definitely not a farmer, I don't have any of that, but you learn how you can do sustainable activities in a farm and then also how to do it in your house or with your family. So that was kind of nice for me that it's not like all of the information I learn I can never use because I'm not working on a farm, but I could then use it for like a garden or if I want to make a certain type of plant grow in my house or something, which is nice. Yeah, one thing about ag is that it's used everywhere, so no matter what we're learning throughout the class, we can kind of use it in our daily lives and like we'll definitely be able to use it in the future. And we're given a lot of different information about like gardening or animals or like water quality, etc. I really like how comprehensive it is. Um, it covers a surprisingly broad range of stuff in construction. I mean, we start out in level one, we even use excavation. So we do heavy machinery. And then by the end of your level three year, you're doing trim work. So it, you really go through so much. And I think just having the practical knowledge, just knowing a little bit of how to do everything makes my life easier, honestly. Like even as a high school student, I've been able to practically apply it. Most people don't realize it's also a bit of a construction management class, and I think that's not what some people expect. But I think probably one of the most valuable things I've learned is knowing how to order material, knowing how to calculate for waste, how to actually look at the plans and manage the people. So um, I'd say that's probably one of the more surprising things I learned, but it's, it's very useful because you, know, you always need someone that knows exactly what they're doing. The, real, the really big project is we, we build tiny houses, cabins, which is really cool because you know, it takes you through this process of building a house. Um, obviously we can fit it inside, which is nice during the winter months. And then we actually sell them to make money for the program. So that's really the big one. Like that, that is the project. It's something you work on for three years, um, but excavation is the most fun. Yeah, so um, it's the complete process, um, starting in level one, going to level three, as I said, you start out with site layout work. So you're out there with transit, um, you transition into excavation. Um, I'm a TA, so right now I'm TAing a level one class. They're doing masonry right now. So the course follows the process that you would take on a timeline for a house. So you start with site layout and you end with trim, which is you know how you do it in real life. Um, so it is very comprehensive. The second half of level one is mostly framing stuff. So putting up walls and all that. Um, by the time you get to level two, you're doing sheathing, you're doing siding, uh, you're doing flashing, um, roofing. That's a big one. And then level three is your plumbing, your electrical, you know, some of the more technical stuff that, you know, you want to be a little more experienced with. But it, it really just follows the timeline of building a house, which is really cool. So freshman year, I took exploring business. And then I took a couple other business classes mixed in that year. And then I went on to my sophomore year where I first got introduced to the Roar store. I took what was at the time called retail management. And um, we went into the store, you know, kind of learned, you know, how the store operates and what the store does on a daily basis. And at the end of that year, I got interviewed to be a manager. Um, my 11th grade year, I went in and I was one of the marketing managers. And I knew from the beginning of the whole thing that I wanted to become the general manager. So my senior year, I applied to be the general manager and I got the position. What I really enjoy about the Roar store is the fact that I get to apply the skills that I learned on my own as well as in the classroom environment. And I get to apply those in a real world environment, that being the Roar store. You know, I have great customer interactions every single day. I learn things every single day and it just really helps me to apply what I want to do in life. So specifically with the Roar store, I've learned customer service, uh, how to run register. I've learned ordering, restocking, um, social media marketing, as well as other various forms of marketing. So I would encourage incoming freshmen to take business classes, even if you aren't interested in business, because you might develop a love or an interest for business, and the business skills that you learn are valuable in the real world in any aspect or any career. 
So freshman year, I took um, grow, or exploring business. And since then, I've taken, I believe it's over 10 different business courses within the high school. Uh, there are three levels of materials processing. The first level um, is for beginners, obviously. Uh, you come into the class, some, a lot of people have never worked with wood before, um, and it's guided. You get to choose a project uh, from a list, and uh, there's a lot of help you can get to create it. Uh, materials processing, too, is similar in terms of that it's guided, um, but you actually start to design your own project and then get help while making it. And Materials Processing 3 has a um, kind of a business aspect to it. Uh, your class will come up with an idea that you want to uh, create and sell in bulk. Uh, so my class made uh, shadow boxes for diplomas. Um, I would encourage an incoming freshman to take the class because it's such a hands-on class and it's kind of not like all of your other classes. It's a really good break for me from sitting down and doing, um, you know, listening to lectures and just taking notes. Um, you get to do something new every day and really work and be on your feet. So there's a the general stuff, there's a uh, table saw, um, planers, that kind of stuff, very basic uh, manufacturing tools. Uh, in our new building we now have something called a CNC router, or, which is pretty cool. It lets you create something on the computer um, and then send it to the router and it will cut it out of a piece of wood, basically. Um, you can do engravings, very detailed little pictures on a piece of wood, or you can even do larger scale, um, more exact cuts.